In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these planters out of five fence pickets, so less than 10 bucks. I've gotten so many comments of people who have built these picket planters, the different designs that we have done, and sold them like crazy. I'm going to show you how to make this style. I'm gonna call it a herringbone because the ends actually meet in a herringbone style. In our past videos, we mainly focused on more of the farmhouse look, farmhouses in. But what I've also taught you is we need to create something for everyone. Not everyone loves farmhouse style. And it is not as difficult as it looks. Yes, there's a lot of different parts, but they're all square. And I've been getting a lot of requests on how to make the long boxes. So in this video, I'll actually be teaching you how to make the smaller boxes, which the Really not small at all as well as the long boxes and you can thank my wife for that because originally I only built this one for the video but like I've warned you guys about it I brought it home to see how she liked it well she liked it a little bit too much and asked me to build a couple of more and since I was going to be making two more I decided to go ahead and make the long box as well so I wanted to do a build that would look good not just with spring flowers but also with fall flowers as well this is it. When I was prototyping this build, I actually tried a couple of different styles just to see what I like. This is more of the herringbone style, but it's all square cut ends. I actually tried more of the 45 degree ends or chevron, I guess, if you want to be fancy about it. Oh, speaking of fancy, I did get me one of those uh, ball trees or hibiscus staging. Remember I told you about staging items? And if you own a business, it's a tax write-off. Put that one down. Tried this style, turned out pretty good, but you really can't tell the difference. And cutting square ends is a heck of a lot easier than cutting 45s. Then I also tried some colors. You know, for fall, I didn't have any fall colors, orange, things like that. So I just threw what I had just to see. But this was just to show you guys that you can create all kinds of different things just by using different color schemes so you can take this idea and run with it and sell these things like crazy they will sell themselves everyone that has seen the prototype so far love them and want them. and we're going to do something a little bit different this week just because we're having fun we have our brag board we're creating our community we're actually going to have like a little competition and i'll tell you more about that during the video so let's go ahead and get started Okay, so while we're sanding down our five fence pickets, let me tell you about this little game that we're gonna play. So at the end of the video, I'm just gonna ask you a random question. And if you know the answer to this question, just drop it into the comments. The person that gives me the correct answer, I'm actually gonna send you a super cool prize. We'll cover that here a bit in the video. The nice part about this build is almost every part is either one inch or one and a half inches wide. So we'll cut those down now. I'm not gonna bore you with the footage of me cutting out all of these parts. Again, this is all square stock, so pretty straightforward. And as always, the cut list will be in the description for every single board. I know it looks like a lot of parts because it is a lot of parts, but just clamping down a board at each one of these lengths, making all of your cuts at once, makes it go by super quick. All of the unstained material that's gonna be used for making my frame and the stained material, that's all gonna be for making the panels. As far as the staining goes, it's up to you, but I used four different stains for this. I'll throw in a picture of the stains that I used, so just make sure to screenshot this or write those down for further reference. We'll be using pocket holes for this, but only on the parts labeled frame top, frame bottom, and frame center. And I was just showing you that my drill bit was actually set at one half of an inch. We've had some issues in other builds where people's screws were actually blowing out the side, and this is caused by the picket being too thin. Sometimes these pickets are only half of an inch thick. And I'm only putting a pocket hole in the center of each end because these parts will be glued and by the time we get everything else on, they're gonna be locked down solid. So with that done, let's go ahead and start putting together some of these wall frames. Each wall frame will consist of a top, a bottom, a center, and two frame sides. And anytime I'm joining smaller parts with pocket holes, I always like to put push boards on the side. This just allows your screws to go in a little easier without your parts moving. And I'll be assembling these with glue and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Really, I should be using the blue powder coated pocket hole screws, but it is what it is. This is what I had. You could probably use an inch and a quarter deck screws in the pocket holes as long as you didn't countersink them too deep. Pocket hole screws are actually designed with a flat top to prevent this from happening, but it's worth a shot. So once our outer frame is assembled, we're just gonna put in our center board. 
And this is what our frame looks like. And we'll be using four of these total. Unless you're building the long planter, then we'll be using six of these total. But we'll go over that here in a bit. And I've had some questions about my glue bottle. That is actually called a glue bot. I'll throw a link in the description. Probably one of my best purchases that I've made here lately because I do not have to wait for the glue to get to the end. It's just always ready. But anyway, so once all of your frames are built, we are actually going to start assembling the panel. So what I'm doing is just marking the center of my center board. So three quarters of an inch in. And if you'll notice, I have all my parts laid out in order. So from the cut list, this is A through K. But I'm actually going to be starting with part G. And the reason why is because I can line it up with the outside edges of the frame and it will still meet up square in the center. And it really doesn't matter in the center if you leave the left side long or the right side long, but whichever you choose, just repeat that pattern. So for this case, the left side, I want the top corner to meet up with my center line. And for the right part, I want the bottom corner to meet up with my center line and the outside edges will meet up with the top edges of my frame. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And from this point, we'll work our way up the part list. So since we started with G, this is going to be F. I'll line it up the exact same way that we did our other part. This is what's going to create the herringbone pattern that will run down the center. And we'll just keep working our way up until we get to part A. And for the bottom, we'll work our way down. So since we started with G, next is going to be H. And now once everything is in place, you'll stop. Okay, so we forgot the glue. You really need to glue this. This is exterior wood glue, so take all of that stuff back off. Exterior wood glue on, or redo it. And then after you fix your mistake, just use one inch bread nails and go all the way around the entire frame, connecting all of our parts to the frame. And this is what you have. And then we'll just repeat this process three more times. And really, it doesn't take that long to do. Next, we're going to be trimming the edges to match the frame. And this can be done with a skill saw or a table saw. If you use a table saw, you'll need to use a miter gauge to push the board through. And since we do not have a square edge, we'll actually be placing a block between the frame and the miter gauge, not the parts the frame and the miter gauge. This will give us a square cut. And I've had a lot of questions about my hearing protection. People have seen me reach up and what looks like I'm turning it on. Well, I actually am. I've used electronic earmuffs in my shop since they came out for the firing range. Before that, I did not wear hearing protection at all. And the only reason why is because I like to listen to my machines. You can hear a problem before you can see it. I also want to be able to hear anyone that comes into my shop. I do not want a jump scare especially with my hands in these tools. So basically, I still hear everything. It's just nothing goes over 80 decibels. This video is not sponsored by Axel, but this is the brand that I use on the range. I know that it's a quality brand, so that's what I use in my shop. After recording this video, I reached out to Axel and told them what I was going to be doing, and they gave me a link that would get you 15% off of any purchase. I'll make sure to drop that into the description. And since I honestly believe that these are a workshop necessity, the winner of our little game that we're playing, I'm going to buy you a pair of these and send them to you. Okay, so enough about my ears. So once you have your first straight edge, you can remove your 2x4 or your block because now you have a straight edge and just use that against your fence. Let's see what this looks like from my point of view. And there's our first panel. Big difference. So after repeating that three more times, let's start putting these things together. I'll be using two inch deck screws to do this and there'll be three on each side. I like the spacing of one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom, and then six inches in the center because these panels are 12 inches tall. And since all of these will have to be pre-drilled, you know me, I'm gonna make a jig. And we'll only have to pre-drill and place these screws on one side of the panel. It doesn't really matter which side as long as they're all the same. I chose the left side. Now with our panel pre-drilled and we're overlapping our second panel, we can actually use that as our jig to pre-drill that panel. And if you notice, I'm just alternating these panels. So if I put the screws into one end of the panel, the next panel, the screws will go into the opposite end. Now 
And this is what it should look like at this point. Perfect. Whoa. No, not perfect. I put a panel in upside down. Yeah. So, had to fix that too. And now that that's fixed, let's go ahead and put our legs on. And I decided to dress the legs up a little bit just by taking a little notch off at 45 degrees. I think it looks better. The previous screws were inset 7 eighths of an inch. That way it would actually screw into the frame of this. I'm going to do the same except I'm going to drop it down about a half of an inch. Anywhere that you see an open edge to the panel, like here, we're going to install the leg flush with the panel. And I'm just going to throw a few brad nails in there, that way I do not have to hold this, but the screws and the glue will actually be what holds this all together. Now if you'll notice here, I'm flipping the jig. I flipped the jig that way that my screws will not line up exactly with each other. If they're lined up exactly with each other, it runs the chance of hitting each other inside the wood. Just what I'm doing over here, I'm taking notes as I go. So anytime you're prototyping, have a notepad, take notes. If you make a mistake, take notes. If you find something that you want to change, take notes. But now I'm just installing the bottom, and this is just what's going to hold the planter. Pre-drill, glue, screw. And I actually ended up changing the design of this where they would inset in with pocket holes. You'll see what I'm talking about when I show you the large planter. Now let's put some top trim on this and call it good. Now we'll give you a specific tip to tip length for these in the description, but like I said before, I like to do this as I go. So once you have all four top trim pieces cut and in place, let's get some screws in it. And I like my screw placement one inch from each end and then one in the center. And you know the drill from here, glue and screw baby. And I am using the same screws that I use for the legs, which will be one and a quarter inch deck screws. And there it is. Beautiful, one of a kind planter. And literally every one of these will be one of a kind. All right, so let me give you the quick rundown on making the large one of these boxes. It's actually pretty easy. So the two side panels are gonna be twice as long. So to join those together, I'm putting pocket hole screws in the edge of one frame. But we're not going to join these together yet. We will do that once the panels have been made. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue in between and joining these together to make one large panel. So overall, you'll need two long panels and two short panels. The only difference with assembly on this is I'm gonna put the short panels on the inside of this box. I'm not gonna rotate them around. So once the box is assembled, you can add your legs the exact same way as we did for the other one. So since these panels are longer to help to support this extra width, I'm actually insetting the bottom boards on these. And after seeing the results, I actually like this better even for the small one, but that's up to you. And the only other change that you'll have to make is the length of your top board. And like I mentioned, if you'd like to have the plans for reference, I'll have those in my Etsy shop. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so now for the game. You've seen this box of screws throughout the whole video. How many screws are left in this box? And this box wasn't new whenever I first started this project. So just drop your guess into the comments, one guess per person. I'll announce the winner in the next video and get those electronic earmuffs headed your way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you're able to take something from that video and add to it and expand upon this idea. Take this design and create something just a little bit different, but put your own twist to it. And just a reminder, our Patreon community is growing like crazy. We have our brag board that I'm continuing to get people's builds and they're doing awesome. And I'll be showing you those pictures shortly in another video. Do not forget to smash that subscribe button and to follow for more. I'm gonna be doing tons of different types of builds. The reason why we are wearing this out is because these are selling like crazy so until next time guys go out there get creative take this design incorporate it into a completely different build and create something new so yeah originally i only built this one it's not there this one so the kind of design up take this design Take this design and put it into it and incorporate it into a complete... Nothing. I've got nothing. Nothing.